Hi friends, it's Monday and I'm Mickey with your singing tip. This week, a Reddit viewer of mine, Jim Triangle, reached out with a suggestion that I thought was a really good idea. He wrote, Hi Michal, I really think if you did a few more song walkthroughs like the Whitney Star Spangled Banner, it would hit so well with people. I've never come across such high quality content before with someone so legitimately able to demonstrate what they're teaching. First of all, thank you so much, Jim. That was a really, really nice message. And I've been thinking about doing this song for a while now, and I thought this was the perfect opportunity. So the song that I'm gonna do today is Aretha Franklin's version of Natural Woman. I realize this is a Carole King song, but I think that we can all agree that no singer, living or dead, was able to sing this song the way that Aretha Franklin did. And she's been very much in the news recently because she passed away on August 16th of this year of pancreatic cancer, God rest her soul. And obviously a lot of singers have been doing covers and tributes um, after that, that sad news. And um, I have two versions of the song that I wanna compare. And the way that we're gonna do this today is I'm gonna play a line of the song and then I'm gonna attempt to sing it in the way that Aretha sang it and to explain to you the kind of technique that she was using. This is gonna be a big challenge for me because she had one of the most incredible instruments of any singer to have ever lived. I also wanna give a special shout out to my student Stacy, who is working on this song right now. This video's for you. The two versions that I'm gonna be using for this tutorial are the original album version that was recorded in 1967 on Aretha's album, Lady Soul, and then the 2015 Kennedy Center Honor Performance, which was attended by the Obamas and Carole King, and she was 73 at the time of that performance. And the reason that I wanna compare and contrast these specific performances are that she was 73 in that performance, and in the original, she was 25. So we're seeing a difference in development of 50 years of experience, and her voice really changed and matured a lot. So the original album version was in the key of C. And let's just take a moment to listen to the first few opening stanzas. hear that she has a very very rich voice but her voice is so much brighter and younger in this recording than it is in the 2015 version so now I'm gonna play the opening of the 2015 version and by the way she comes out and she sits down at a grand piano and she starts playing the song so she wasn't just singing it she was across the board an amazing artist and performer and you'll hear that she lowered the key by this point to B flat which is one whole step Considering that she's 50 years older, it's pretty incredible that she could even hit those notes in the key of B flat. So here she comes in 2015. She's got this <laughs> amazing fur coat on. She sits down at the piano. This is her playing. Carol King is like hyperventilating right now. <laughs> Obama's crying. <laughs> the difference in the maturity of her instrument her voice sounds incredible still and I would say that her voice sounds so much better with experience and with age she really did age like a fine wine I mean she goes from having a beautiful voice but very very bright I used to feel so and then here it's so much more rich it's darker and just richer and it fills her her body you know she was a big woman she had a big voice so now 
let's go back to the original album version and we're gonna sing it in the original key. And on this version, there are some very high notes in the bridge that she actually belts. She goes up to the high E flat, um, which is not that high for most people, but for me, it's challenging because I have a pretty low voice. So I'm gonna do those in my head voice, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. So here we go. So this is very, very bright tone, very forward placement, and it's very easy the way she sings it. Looking out on the morning rain. But it's also very connected, it's not breathy. Looking out on the morning rain. And yet it's not full chest voice. Looking out on the morning rain. It's very, very light. I used to feel so inspired. I used to feel so uninspired. So there's a little bit of a breathiness in there. It's not totally zipped up, her chords. Otherwise, it would sound like this. I used to feel so uninspired. There's a little bit of breathiness coming through. I used to feel so uninspired. And there's a lot of nuance in the way that she's playing with dynamics and adding in the vibrato on the end. So you can hear that she really already at the age of 25 was an incredible artist. And when I knew I had to face another day. So even here, and when I knew I had to face another day. There's a lot of nuance in the way that she's playing with the melody and using different techniques on each of the notes. So instead of just doing the melody straight, and when I knew I had to face another day, right? And when I knew I had to face another day, she switches up the melody to make it a little bit more interesting. So beautiful, 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 right? She has that very bluesy, Lord, it made me feel so tired. And then she uses the lyrics to describe the sound of the word with her voice. So she's using her voice to illustrate the meaning of the words, if that makes sense. So when she says, so tired, her, she actually makes her voice sound tired and uses a little bit of rasp on it. So I don't know if you could hear that, but let's listen to that again. So, so much nuance, right? So here, before the day I met you, she doesn't do it full force the entire way through. She lands on that, before the day I met you, and then she backs off on the you. Yeah. And then she scoops into that, life, life was so unkind. You're the key to my peace of mind. And then this is very bouncy and playful. But you're the key to my peace of mind. So she's actually not belting this yet. So all of this is in her head voice. The you make me feel, you make me feel, you make me feel. And then she switches back into her chest voice. Like a natural woman. And then she stretches that out. So even though she could belt this, it's not very high, she's choosing to use that that more connected head voice, and it's almost like a fake belt, and it's not really that intense, but it just gives it so much more nuance than if she was just pressing down the gas and belting the whole way. So here, she's leaving a lot of space between the phrases, and she's still using a pretty light, though connected tone. So when my soul that was a little sharp. <laughs> when my soul, and then she leaves a lot of space, was in the lost and found. You came along to claim it. 
So again, she's really using the sound of the lyrics themselves and playing with them. You came along to claim it. She really hits that c claim it. So here she uses vocal fry to get into that phrase. I didn't know just what was wrong with me. And then she kind of like throws that away. Just what was wrong with me. And again, it's very playful the way that she's bouncing on that breath. Till your kiss help me name it. So instead of singing it very flat in affect and not having energy in it, till your kiss help me name it. She's helping to move the rhythm along by giving it a little bit of extra air and breathing air and life into it. Till your kiss help me name it. So there's almost like a bounce in your step when you're singing those notes. So now she's starting to really get that like more rich belt. Now I'm no longer doubtful of what I'm living for. And she has this almost like smoky, breathy quality to her voice, which I cannot reproduce. And I think that's a function of just her physiology. Like she was, she was a bigger woman and she just had this resonant space that gave her voice more space. It was like she was like singing in a hall or something. If I make you happy, I don't need to do more. So even the way that she phrases that is so expert. So instead of, you know, if you look at the lyrics on a paper, it almost looks like it's a jumble and that it's not gonna scan properly. And if I make you happy, I don't need to do more. But she manages to really sing it in a way that it's very rhythmic and it fits. And if I make you happy, I don't need to do more. And now here we come to the second chorus. Again, she's not belting it there. She's using that um, that very connected fake belt in her head voice. And um, a lot of times singers have a lot of difficulty making their head voice sound powerful and they get a very weak tone. So they get, you make me feel, you make me feel. And there are a lot of ways to counteract this some methods are gonna work for some people, some are gonna work for others. One that I talked about in my Whitney Star Spangled Banner video is to bring the sound forward. So a lot of times what happens is people get scared of high notes and they swallow the sound and it ends up being very back placed and dark and small sounding. You make me feel, you make me feel. So just by virtue of imagining the resonance where the sound is buzzing coming forward and placing it more in the mask, which you'll hear a lot of singing teachers say, or just really feeling it buzzing in your nose and in that like nasopharynx mucous membrane area over here. You make me feel. You can imagine there's like a laser beam shooting out of your nose like your Rudolph the Red Nose Reindeer. You can imagine that you're bouncing your voice off of the wall in front of you. There's all these different little mental tricks, but you wanna just bring the sound forward. And just opening your mouth can help the sound come out a lot, which seems obvious, but instead of you make me feel a very narrow space, which isn't gonna allow the resonance to come out of my head, I'm just gonna open my mouth. And you know, when we're singing, we hear the sound within our own head, so it sounds very loud to us, but if you're not opening your mouth, that sound can't escape and people can't hear it. You make me feel. When you sing, you can stand in front of a mirror, there's a little nice little trick, and take two of your fingers, and make sure that you're opening your jaw wide enough so that two fingers can fit in the space between your teeth. You make me feel. And if you watch a lot of these singers, they open their mouths really, really wide when they're singing. Okay, so here comes that bridge, and this is the really high part of the song. It goes up to a high C for the first two lines. <laughs> then on the third line, it goes up to an E flat, and she belts it. Oh, baby, what you done to me? What you 
So this is very like sensuous and loud and connected. Whoa, baby, what you done to me? So it's like, oh, you know, you can like feel just what a presence she was when she's singing that line. So that is a high E flat. And for me, I could probably hit that note if I really push my voice, but it's very high for me. For some people, it's not gonna be that difficult if you're a high alto, if you're a mezzo soprano, if you're a soprano, it shouldn't be a problem for you. I'm a very low alto, so it's hard for me. I know that I could probably scream that note and be okay, but if I'm doing this in the context of a set, I would have to make this the last song because then I would know that I would blow my voice singing that note. So rather than try to, to push my chest voice really high and hit that note, I would do it in head voice. So I would do, and I just wanna be. So that's my, my head voice, that's my fake belt. And I can get that pretty loud, wanna be. And it almost sounds like I'm belting it, but if I tried to belt it, it would be really, really strained. So that's kind of your choice depending on where your range is. If you feel that you can comfort comfortably hit that note, then you should go for it. But if you don't, you can use your fake belt. Another way that you can strengthen your head voice up there and get an even stronger fake belt is to really just engage your core. So when you're holding out a note and it's high, oh, that's a high note, I can actually simulate engaging my core in a couple of different ways to make sure that I'm doing it the right way and getting the right feeling in my body. One really easy way is to lean back about 15 degrees like you're going down for a sit up and immediately you'll feel your ab muscles engage. And that's the kind of feeling that you wanna maintain when you're singing those high notes. So everything is engaged right now. It's not super constricted and tight. Not like that, so that I can't breathe, but I'm also not so relaxed that I can't get that breast support. And you can simulate that in other ways too. You can take your hands and you can press them together as you're singing the note. So, as I push my hands together, I'm engaging my core muscles and I'm getting that bump in volume. You could try going into plank position. You can go up against a wall and go down for a push up against the wall. I had a student that used to stand in a handstand, she was a gymnast, and sing at the same time and really get that volume bump on those notes. So those are all good ways to just really increase the volume on your high head voice notes. And finally, my last tip on this is to try to get that nasal twang. So making sounds like Nyeh. so Nyeh, Nyeh. like a evil witch, Nyeh, Nyeh, Nyeh. or like a baby. Wah, 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 wah. Can help you really get this huge bump in volume, this very direct, strong sound on your high notes. And then, since we don't wanna sound like a wicked witch when we're singing those notes, you open your mouth a little bit and you add in some more space, some more resonant space and darkness to layer on top of that twangy note in order to make it sound more palatable. So you go from wah to wah. So I'm still getting that volume, but it doesn't sound so ugly. Oh, I have one more tip also. Something that I found that really helps me and may or may not help you is to think about it operatically. So if I sing a note in an operatic way, and I give it a little bit more volume, like I imagine I'm this opera singer, that helps me to get a stronger sound in my head voice. That's something that I haven't really heard other pop um, contemporary singers talk about. So if that helps you, you should definitely apply that as well. So let's apply that to the final line in the bridge. And then um, she goes back into the chorus. So let's see if she belts it on this last time around. So she actually.
actually doesn't. She's still in her head voice on those notes. You make me feel. She's got a little anticipation there. You make me feel. And she's got some vamps out. You make me feel. So she's just playing with that same melody and doing a higher note here, a higher note there. Um, to just give it a little bit more variety and make the end a little bit more um, over the top. So that's the whole song. And obviously in the 2015 version on the bridge, everything is a whole step down. So if you want to go for it and belt those notes, it's a little bit easier. Thank you so much for watching. I had a great time making this video. And if you liked it and you want to see me do more of these performance specific song tutorials, please let me know in the comments below. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe. I will see you back here next week for another singing tip. And until then, happy singing.